Good morning, students. So today we are in the fourth session of our lesson, our environment, and here we are going to complete three topics. One is the unidirectional flow of energy, and the other is the ten percent law and biological magnification. Before I start with today's session, I take a quick recap of what we had done before. Okay. Now, students, in the previous session, we had discussed about the ozone layer and the importance of ozone layer to human beings. Okay, the session before the ozone layer, that part, what we had done, we had studied about the food chain and how a complicated food chain is called as a food web. Correct? Okay. So this was a quick recap of the previous two sessions. Now we will do one thing. We will start with the unidirectional flow of energy. Okay. Now to understand the unidirectional flow of energy, let's talk about energy first. Now the source of energy on the Earth surface is the sun. Okay, it is basically the sun which provides energy for all living organisms. Why did I say that? Now that is because the sunlight is used by the plants to prepare their food, and that food which is prepared by the plants is utilized by all other living organisms. Okay, so sun's energy is the solar energy. That solar energy is getting converted to chemical energy. So that means we are converting one form of energy to an another form of energy. And when we convert one form of energy to an another form of energy, some amount of energy is lost in the form of heat. Okay, so this is happening in a biological system too. So here I have an ecosystem here. So you can see this is a terrestrial ecosystem. Sun is a source of energy. You can see the green plants preparing its food by photosynthesis. Up and you can see animals like grasshopper feeds on the green plants. This grasshopper is in turn eaten up by the frog. The frog is in turn eaten up by a bird. Okay, so you can see that the movement of energy, solar energy, moving to the plant, and from there slowly it is moving to the body of grasshopper. and slowly to the body of the frog and finally to the body of the bird so here there is a unidirectional flow of energy energy is moving from the sun to all other living organisms at no point of time it happens that the living organism will give its energy to the sun it is not happening okay so this is a unidirectional flow but at the same time i would like to add that when the solar energy from the sun is getting converted to chemical energy at that time some energy is lost as heat at the same time from the plant when the energy is taken up by the grasshopper at that time also energy is lost in the form of heat because it is transferred from one form to an another form when the energy is moving from one organism to an another organisms okay so let's do the reading part now unidirectional flow of energy the flow of energy is unidirectional and requires a continuous input and the continuous input is the sun energy cannot be made or destroyed energy transformation are not perfect and energy is lost in each transformation in the form of heat as i told you when it is moving from one organism to an another organism some amount is lost in the form of heat okay yeah so let's come to the next slide now Now in the next slide here I will just explain this picture here already yes here you know that this is the sun sun solar energy is utilized by the producers producers the energy is passed on to the primary consumers then on to the uh, secondary consumers and then on to the tertiary consumers the secondary consumers are also called primary carnivores and the tertiary consumers are also called as secondary carnivores so here also you can see the flow of energy is taking place in this particular direction okay this is strictly we are talking about the flow of energy okay so from the sun to the different type of organisms on the earth surface and when it is moving from one organism to an another organism some amount of energy is lost in the form of heat okay now here at the lower part it has been given about the biogeochemical cycle that any of this organism that is from the producers to the primary consumers to secondary to the tertiary consumers any of these organism can die when they die their dead bodies are going to be acted upon by decomposers 
now that decomposers were decompose the body and return the minerals back to the soil minerals back to the soil and this minerals act as a raw materials for the producers to prepare their food but only with that raw materials can the producers prepare their food no what does it again require it again requires the help of sunlight that is nothing but your solar energy so students this is regarding the unidirectional flow of energy let's read that reading part the flow of energy in the ecosystem is unidirectional the energy uh, enters the plants from the sun through photosynthesis during the making of food this energy is then passed from one organism to another in the food chain energy given out by the organism as heat is lost to the environment it does not return to be used by the plants again and this makes the flow of energy in ecosystem as unidirectional okay so when one energy one form of energy is converted to an another form of energy that heat is liberated that heat we can not take it back this uh, living organism cannot take it back let us come to the next part and in the next part you are going to study the students the 10% law now to study this 10% law let us see here now now only the producers can utilize or trap or tap the energy from the sun so here you can see that this is the energy which is present in the sunlight out of that a particular amount is utilized by the plants to prepare their food so when the plant is preparing its food at that time now students you can see that this is the amount of uh, energy which is there in the sunlight okay now after that uh, what is going to happen from that sunlight that is the solar energy some amount of energy is utilized by the producers to prepare its food so let us take that the producers are by making how much 10000 kilo calories 10000 kilo calories of energy has been trapped and the food has been prepared for that and the total amount which is there in a producer is 10000 kilo calories of food is there that is the energy which is there in the food okay now after a plant is preparing its food is it going to happen that that plant is going to be eaten by the grasshopper in the next minute no the plant may be living for one week the plant may be living for one month correct so when the plant is living for one week or one month it will undergo what respiration it will undergo what growth correct or not it may undergo it may carry out some repair mechanisms in the body okay so at that time some amount of the energy from this 10000 kilo calories is utilized by the plant itself so by the time the grasshopper comes and eats the plant the grasshopper is only going to get how many kilo calories this is our grasshopper the grasshopper is only getting the 1000 kilo calories out of it that is the 10% of plants energy is only been given to the grasshopper 90% is lost 90% is lost as i told you for the respiration in the form of respiration in the growth the maintenance and lost as heat also because it is tra getting transformed from one form to an another form correct so 10% of energy is only passed away to the next trophic level now the grasshopper is feeding upon that particular plant now is it so that after feeding directly the grasshopper will be eaten up by a mouse no grasshopper will jump from one place to an another place then it is going to move it is going to fly correct or not it is going to excrete all the life activities are going to take place in the grasshopper so what is happening again it is going to utilize a lot of energy for its own life processes so now when the grasshopper is going to be eaten up by a mouse let me tell you again 10% of energy is going to be transferred so out of the 1000 kilo calories you can see 100 kilo calories are only moving ahead correct now after the mouse eats and consumes the grasshopper does it happen that the mouse will be all of a sudden eaten up by the python no definitely it will move around here it will move around there and then, then accidentally it is eaten up by a python so when it is eaten up by a python again as i told you growth maintenance lost in the form of e energy lost in the form of heat and now what is that 10% of the energy of the mouse will be only passed on to the python 
so you are seeing that in each step each traffic level only 10 percent is passed uh, to the next traffic level correct and now you have understood why it is only 10 percent which is moving because when an animal is having the energy from the food that entire energy will not be passed on to the next traffic level because it will be utilizing some part of it for its own growth and maintenance and when are converting it from one form to an another form definitely some amount of heat is lost okay so rule of 10 percent i have only 10 percent passes to the next level therefore 90 percent loss at each trophic level okay now let's read this part during the transfer of 10 percent law during the transfer of energy to the successive tropic levels in an ecosystem there is loss of energy all along the path number of transfer of no, no sorry no transfer of energy is 100% the energy available at each trophic level is 10% of the previous level we have seen that 10000 getting converted to here you can see the 10% here 10,000 getting converted to your uh, 1,000 to your 1,000 getting converted to 100 kilocalories and 100 kilocalories finally getting converted to 10 kilocalories. Okay, I hope the slide is clear students. Yeah, so here again I have the 10% law here. Yes, now in this 10% law. This is a 10% no, only about 10% of the energy at any trophic level is transferred to the next level. The rest is lost through metabolic process. That is metabolic process means life processes as heat. So you can see here one more trophic level. These are the producers. This is a primary consumer. This is a secondary consumer and this is a tertiary consumer. Can you see this is a pyramid here. So if I do make it the energy pyramid, energy pyramid is going to be like this. Can you see it is broad at the base and it is going to taper as it moves ahead because there is loss of energy in the form of heat. Okay, that is as I told you carrying out different metabolic activities. So who will be the one or who is going to have maximum energy in a food chain? It will be the producers who are having maximum amount of energy. And from the producers as a food energy passes from one trophic level to an another trophic level, always there is loss of energy. Loss of energy and only 10% will be passed on to the next trophic level. Okay, so that's why we draw a pyramid. It is a triangle because the base is going to have more amount of energy as compared to that of the apex and the apex may be always occupied by the top level carnivore. And so sad, you see the top level carnivores are, are going to get very very little amount of energy as compared to that of the producers. Okay. Thus, yeah, thus there is a gradual reduction in the amount of energy available as we go from producer level to the higher trophic level of organisms. Okay, students, I hope you have understood the 10% law. Now, so we have completed unidirectional flow of energy. We have completed with the 10% law. Let us come to the third topic okay, and that is biological magnification. So now let's go to see what is this biological magnification. Okay, yeah, first you will pay attention. Now, biological magnification is a topic which is related to pollutant. Okay, you know students, we use different type of pesticides like that of DDT. Okay, and in many of the industries, you know, mercury is utilized. Okay, so now in the industries, after the mercury is utilized, what is there when they clean that particular industry, that waste water is going to contain mercury and that waste water will be thrown out into the nearby water resource. So, the nearby water resource can get contaminated with mercury or it may get contaminated with the insecticides like that of DDT. Okay, and the problem is that substances like that of mercury and DDT, when it enters into the body of the organism, it literally gets accumulated in the body of the organism. Okay, it gets accumulated in the fatty tissues of our body and it cannot be excreted out. So, what is there? The amount of this pollutants like DDT and mercury we keep on accumulating in our body. And this phenomenon of accumulation of this uh, pollutants in the body of any type of organisms, you call it as biological magnification. 
okay and this any type of organism and i say it is going to be the different trophic levels okay so that uh, we will see here now okay so it, i shall explain it with the help of a picture yes yeah so here i am having a water body and in this water body i am having a pollutant okay the amount of pollutant is very very less that is 0.000003 ppm ppm stands for parts per million so the amount of pollutant is very very less okay now in this water body there is going to be small microorganisms which are called as a zooplanktons now what happens is this pollutants will penetrate into the body of the zooplanktons now this zooplanktons when i say they are microscopic organisms now from the body of the zooplanktons it will enter into the body of the small fish okay so zooplankton it is what 0.04 ppm okay when it is zoop from the body of the zooplankton when it is entering into the body of the small fish it is what 0.5 ppm so now you will ask why it has increased now let me tell you a small fish is not going to feed on one zooplankton correct it will not feed on one zooplankton okay it is going to feed upon around 100 or 200 zooplanktons so that 200 zooplanktons are going to have all the toxic materials so it will get the toxic materials from all the 200 zooplankton so the amount of the toxic substance in the body of small fish is going to increase now this small fish is going to be consumed by the large fish now is it going to happen that the large fish is going to have only one small fish no it may have two it may have three so the concentration of this toxic substances will be more in the body of the large fish and this large fish may be eaten up by any of the bird now when this birds are consuming this uh, fish uh, fish here they are not going to consume only one fish they may consume around five fish and all the five fish of this particular pond is contaminated so all the five fish will have that many amount of toxic substances so finally the body of the bird is going to accumulate a large amount of toxic substances so you can see here small fish as i told you 0.5 ppm parts per million okay now it has become large fish it has gone to it has become two parts per million and finally in the body of a bird who is eating this large fish it has become how much 25 parts per million so in this way the toxic substances keeps on accumulating at every trophic level because as i told you this toxic substances are uh, lipophilic that is they have a liking towards the fatty tissues gets accumulated in the body and cannot be excreted if it would have been excreted then we will not have this problem of biological magnification okay let's do the reading part now biological magnification it is defined as an increase in the concentration of some harmful substances at trophic level sometimes these harmful chemicals may enter into the food chain it is surprising to note that at each step the concentration keeps on increasing we have seen that now let's go to the next slide the next slide also it is here you can see it is a water body you can see that it is entering into the pollutant you can see from the water body this much in the body of the phyto when it when you talk about the plankton you can see it is 5 ppm it is entering you are eaten up by a fish you can see the and if finally in a bird you can see the concentration uh, concentration increases okay yeah so now this is regarding the red dots the red dots here it is showing the amount of toxic substances in the water body and how the amount is increasing as we move from one trophic level to an another trophic level okay students now the contaminants which are there as i told you the toxic substances which are there might be heavy metals such as mercury arsenic and pesticides polychlorinated diphenyls and ddt these substances are taken up by the organism through the food they consume when the organism in the higher food chain feed on the organism at the lower food chain containing this toxin these toxins get accumulated in the higher organisms which we have seen that water is containing what plankton plankton is eaten by fish fish is eaten up by a bird this you can study in different food chains and this is happening students 
in the outside environment in the ecosystem this is happening okay so now this is regarding the biological magnification i hope you students have understood what the biological magnification properly okay so the this marks the end of our lesson our environment in the beginning of the session the beginning of this lesson we have studied about biotic component uh, biotic component natural ecosystem artificial ecosystem producers consumers decomposers then in the second part of the lesson we studied about the food chain as well as the food web in the third part of the lesson we studied about the ozone layer and its depletion and and in the fourth part of the lesson we studied about the 10% law the biological magnification and unidirectional flow of energy okay so now let's uh, look into our assignment questions yeah now explain the 10% law i hope all of you can explain the 10% law you have to draw a pyramid after you draw a pyramid what you are going to do is at the base of the pyramid we will have maximum energy you can take 10000 kilo calories or 1000 kilo calories and you have to see that only 10% of it will pass into the next trophic level and the minimum amount of energy will be there at the apex where the top level carnivores are there okay next explain the phenomenon of biological magnification as i told you you have to speak about a contaminated water body you have to say about toxic substances like that of ddt and arsenic or mercury there and from the body of the phyto from the body of the plankton it enters into body of small fish from a small fish to a larger fish to that even of a bird so you can write a particular number and you can see or show them how it is increasing and you can explain that definitely that a fish is a, a small big fish is not going to feed on one small fish but it will feed on many small fish so that much amount of accumulation will take place and excretion does not occur because they get accumulated in our tissue that's why it is called biological magnification it has got an another word actually bio accumulation it is also called a bio accumulation because it is accumulating in the body of living organisms and explain the unidirectional flow of energy you know that the energy moves from the sun to the different organisms correct correct and when solar energy is moving from uh, the uh, from the uh, your, uh, ecosystem to that of the plants body Uh, and from the plant body to that of the uh, primary consumer then the second day, some amount of energy is lost in the form of heat okay so that will be the unidirectional flow of energy okay so that marks the end of this lesson and the end of this session thank you students